Eagle vs Shark is a 2007 release romantic comedy directed by Taika Waititi. It's a story of Lily and Jared, who are two sort of social outcasts. As I mentioned, it's, it's set in New Zealand, obviously the home country of Taika Waititi. Lily works in a fast food restaurant, but is sort of ostracised by her workmates. Um, no one seems to really like her. And Jared works in a nearby video game shop. He gets on fine with his workmates, but um, yeah, he's a, obviously a bit of a geek. They meet when Jara comes into the fast food restaurant for lunch. Lily takes a shine to him and thinks he's a bit of a looker, even though he's sporting some sort of mullet. <laughs> but we won't hold that against him. He, yeah, she takes a shine to him and he, he comes in again a few days later. She, she's just been told she's going to be very redundant. So she gives him free fries, give him free cheese in his burger as well. <laughs> as a sort of sweetener to try and uh, get him to like her. He gives her an invite to a party at his house, but it's not actually for her, it's for her better-looking workmate, shall we say. This workmate isn't interested and throws the invite in the bin, so Lily goes instead with her brother, who is quite, you know, he's a nice guy, he's supportive, you know, they're like best friends almost, they live together. Uh, yeah, they go to this party, which is basically dressed as your favourite animal, hence the eagle and shark of the title. Lily goes as a shark and Jared is dressed as an eagle. And there's various other, you know, friends and customers of the of the game store. Um, at this party he likes her outfit but he's not overly bothered I mean he's a bit of a sort of while he's a bit socially awkward and a bit of a geek he's kind of got that adolescent teenage sort of bravado where he pretends to be you know a bit more macho and cool than he actually is during this party they have a a sort of tournament with this game called fight man which is basically a a poor man's version of mortal kombat (laughs) lily is is amazingly good at it so she he's a instantly impressed with this and suddenly takes a keen interest in her and they end up in his bedroom and uh, you know one thing leads to another they start a relationship we start to learn more about jared how he's a, he, you know he probably suffers a bit with depression and we discover that he's he was bullied at school he's got this plan to go and beat up his bully um, he's going to travel home to his hometown and he's going to beat him up so he persuades lily and her brother because he's got a car drives them both back to Jared's hometown for this uh, for this encounter Lily meets his family who are just as old as Jared so this is our final week now of our alternative romantic comedies uh, having done Punch Strong Love and I'm a Cyborg and Love Me If You Dare last week so this one Eagle vs Shark is our final one of the bunch and just like the other I think we've done quite well actually they're all quite quirky they're all quite alternative and they're all quite odd in their own little ways uh, I had not seen this one before. I, I wasn't. I d- didn't do it for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. I don't think I disliked it quite like you disliked Love Me If You Dare last week. Um, although you did say that you didn't. You didn't hate that. I film. didn't hate it. It just didn't no. work for me. I think the other way around with this for me, and mm. I think I could probably say straight away why it didn't work. I mean, I'm not. It didn't make me laugh. There were moments in there that I kind of, you know, smiled. <laughs> <laughs> Should we say? I mean. It's Napoleon Dynamite, and I was never a fan of that film either. And I think this <laughs> is that's probably why. Um, did you like Napoleon Dynamite? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's not to like? You can. I mean, I. I mean, go on. I, go. I would agree. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you can compare it to that. It is quite, you know, similar in that it has sort of oddball characters who are awkward, but I think it's. It's different in the way that it is a comedy, although you didn't find it particularly funny. I think, while on the surface, Jared is obviously, you know, he's a bit of an idiot. You know, no one would really want to go out with him, let's face it. But there's more going on with him because obviously, you know, that, that I forgot to mention there's also, you know, when he goes home, you know, he, he tells her that his brother and his mother are both dead. His brother died saving a, a boy from a fire at the school. But that turns out not to be the case. But when she go, when they go to his hometown, you know, his father is not, not really interested in Jared at all. You know, he still holds a candle for for this other brother called Gordon, who was actually played, you know, in flashbacks by Taika Waititi. You know, this this father still, you know, holds him in high regard. Jared is like the poor relation, and he's just not, you know, the dad just isn't interested in anything that Jared does. So straight away, you know, obviously he's got daddy issues. And he's got this, you know, this past where he was bullied at school and obviously holds a lot of resentment about that. So this is all sort of inside him um, and he doesn't know how to deal with it. And and it's clear that he hasn't really grown up since his sort of teenage years. He still acts like, 
you know a teenager basically even though he's sort of 30 odd <laughs> so uh, whereas Napoleon Dynamite I think it's just about weird kids at school. I tell you what's, so. what's quite what's quite interesting is actually how you just described this film is almost how I described Love Me If You Dare last week, and yet you weren't so fond of that one. <laughs> I mean, I have to say with this one, and the trouble is, I, I if I'm watching a film, and I can see all its influences all mm. over it. If I'm thinking of its film, if I'm thinking of the influences of other films on the film I'm watching, I'm not enjoying the film I'm watching. And right, and okay. I could and I could feel I mean this was like a it was like a a, a, kind, of, a kind of mishmash of Napoleon Dynamite and Wes Anderson and Michelle Gondry and all those kind of you know quirky indie films that came out in the kind of mid the early two thousands to the kind of two thousand and ten mm. period there was a lot of that kind of you know it's also got stop motion in there which. I wasn't quite... I was like, why is there suddenly stop motion here? And I couldn't quite understand why it was there other than other films of that era used stop motion as well. And and it was kind of... It just felt like it was trying too hard to be quirky. So I liked what we do in The Shadows, but I didn't like Jojo Rabbit. You know, we went to... I went to see that with my girlfriend and we both came away from that being, being like... It didn't make me laugh. I didn't know what that film was trying to be, whether it was trying to be dramatic or a comedy. I got, I was so confused coming out of that film. I just, and maybe I just don't get his, I'm not into his humour as much. No. I have to say it reminded me of times of the kind of situation comedy that you get in a Mike Lee film, the characters you get in a Mike Lee film, the, uh, the British director. But in his films, I find them more realistic. They they feel more realistic. It doesn't well, feel I mean, like, it's it de- yeah, like I mean, nightly films are like you know a slice of real life, really. They are, they? And, but, and depressing but, with it most of the time. Yeah, but no, but but they are situation comedy as well because they're very mm. funny. Mike Lee films. They are very. They are a slice of real life. They are a kind of mixture of kitchen life drama, but mm. they are also very funny and they're very warm as well. And those characters, I feel, are although there is a characterization to them there's a caricature with a lot of the, his 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 cast is the actors they they have a kind of a caricature that they put on it's also quite realistic where in this one i just felt like he was they were making fun a little bit of people like that so that's why i couldn't i couldn't really go with this i mean it's interesting you should, you know you mentioned mike lee uh, and people like that because there's an interview on the dvd with Taika Waititi and he you know he is a fan of mike lee that's and Wes anderson and P.T. Anderson. Um, and, it, you know, it's not... We did Punch Drunk Love yeah. um, a few weeks ago, and it's not completely dissimilar to that. It, you know, f- I know it's obviously very differently... You know, it looks very different, and the but it deals... That deals with sort of awk... Well, the main character in that is very awkward. But but Punch Drunk Love, I don't feel like he is making fun of Paul... Uh, of Adam Sanders character. That kind of, you know, I... That that awkwardness that film's very awkward and he's very awkward, but he he, he there is a love there there is a romance there that, that eventually becomes you know a, a thing uh, and maybe the way I, mean, I know this film's not trying to be that film I I saw an interview with Taika with TT and he was talking about Punch Drunk Love actually when we did Punch Drunk Love um, and uh, I thought that was quite in- interesting to listen to but I didn't feel that same warmth here as I don't know mm. Punch Drunk Love's odd because it's kind of it's, it's a warm film but it's also, it's also a very cold film um, it, and it does those two degrees I think it merges those degrees quite well this film I found it I don't know I, he just annoyed me the main character I think like, like Julian did last week in Love Me If You Dare To You yeah. this guy Jared um, annoyed me I have to say <laughs> some of his an- some of his actions and the way he treated those around him and the way he treated her I thought was quite despicable actually I was like why well, no, absolutely absolutely no, you, you know that's but that's intentional he's supposed to be like I said he he is sort of putting on an act almost you know he lies quite a lot about things to make himself sound more interesting uh, and more macho and manly etc etc so it's all an act and you know and he's, he's exposed for that so I think as you know as a person he does he is changed by the end because he's worked out his you know his anger issues with his um you know with his bully and he's sort of reconciled with his dad a bit so those things are the the root cause of the of why he is the way he is and i think you know i why you haven't been around people like that i had you know i worked in a game shop myself for quite some time you know and been around a lot of you know gamer nerds and people are like that they do have a lot of bravado um even though they're they're nerdy and geeky which you know i mean it's different nowadays 
being oh, yeah. into comic books and superheroes and things like that. it's all very mainstream so it's not seen so much uh, as a geeky thing 20 years ago it, it was so it was quite a different audience that was that was into those things and i agree with you i definitely agree with you there because obviously i'm slight because I, I, I worked in a record shop so i got the kind of the high fidelity world which in a way <laughs> high fidelity is like that it is like work that's what like working in a record shop is yeah so i, I know what you mean it was and I, I suppose i didn't come i didn't come from that comic book world i came from the record world in, in films so films for me about working in record shops although this isn't a film about working in a in, he just happens to work in that shop like that but it's those kind of people around you maybe that's the humor and maybe that maybe the humor itself just didn't work on I mean, me i think he did base the characters on people he knew so to a certain extent and lily was a creation of lauren horsley who pay, who played her uh i mean she's you know she's just very shy and you know and a bit socially awkward and just a bit of an outcast for no real reason you know she's she doesn't do anything to horrible to anybody she's perfectly nice um she's just not cool enough to hang around with all the you know all the other girls that, uh, that work at the fast food restaurant so you know she's she's a, a nice character what i did like was her relationship with her brother and i would yeah. have liked to have seen more with her and her brother there's not enough i don't think i i, th- I thought that was an interesting kind of i know i know obviously in a short film you can't do everything you know and off and oftentimes in films you know something something changes and you don't see characters again uh, because you have to follow the, your main protagonists um but sometimes you'll think oh I did, I did like that i mean that was something i quite liked and i thought her characterization she did that really well unfortunately didn't didn't work because i went into it kind of you know i, I love you know, I love Australian, I love New Zealand films, um, and uh, I haven't seen many of his films. I think I've only seen this now, this one, What We Do in the Shadows, and and Jojo, Jojo. Rabbit. I've not seen yeah. any of his other films. I haven't seen... He, he did Thor, didn't he? And, yeah, he did uh, Thor, and he's yeah, filming another Thor at the moment. And he did... After this, he did one called Boy. Yeah. Yeah, What We Do in the Shadows is great. Hunt for the Wilder People was brilliant. I loved his Thor film. Uh, and, and I enjoy... Yeah, I, after you said you, you didn't... Because Jojo Rabbit got, got some sort of mixed reviews, yeah. So I was you know when going in, I wasn't sure what, whether I was going to like it or not. But no, I did. I really enjoyed it. So, <laughs> so I just I'm 100 percent on board with Taika Waititi's brand of humour. Yeah, I mean you know, and I, I certainly don't want to completely knock this film. I did think the cinematography was really nice. I think it's shot really, really, really well. It's got a nice soundtrack. I mean, if you like things like it's got Stone Roses on there. And uh, Devendra Banhart. It's interesting that you mentioned that he liked Mike Lee. I thought that was interesting because there's definitely there are many scenes and 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 camera placements that reminded me a lot of Mike Lee films, which is which is quite interesting actually. Um, yeah, I, I I like the fact that he likes Mike Lee actually because I'm a big fan of Mike Lee films. But I think for me, and maybe it was just the humour. I mean, yeah, it is a sort of you either it is the kind of film like Napoleon Dynamite and other similar films like that. You either like it or you don't. You know, it either works for you or it yeah. doesn't. You yeah. know, I find, you know, Napoleon Dynamite is hilarious. Um, <laughs> so, you know, Napoleon is a complete weirdo, um, but also completely hilarious. Just the way he, you know, he acts and the things he says. It just, yeah, it, it's it makes me laugh. But no, so uh, but you so you have this on DVD. I do, yes, yeah. I picked it up years ago. I mean, I haven't watched it for a long time, but um, but yeah, it's got you know, like I said, it's got an interview on it, which is which is really interesting. You know, I think a lot these days, Taika Waititi. I mean, he's he, you know, he is a bit of a character in a, in himself, um, and when he's interviewed, he kind of plays that plays up to that. Um, but he's actually quite <laughs> quite down to earth in this interview. It was quite, you know, he had lots of interesting stuff to say. Um, you know, like like the influences, the stuff he likes, and that that you know that influenced him on this, and how, you know, how it came to the screen and things like that, um, and what you know what his hopes for for what he was doing next. Because it was um, yeah. sorry, because it was because uh, it's Sundance, isn't he? he got Sundance uh, yeah. funding to do it. Yeah, I mean, he'd already made a, a short film, I think, which which uh, won an Oscar. So okay. you know, he said that really helped, unsurprisingly, um, to yeah to get on that program to get the film made. Yeah, and he's obviously gone. You know, from there he's well, he's never looked back really. So yeah, it's got deleted scenes and, and and other interviews with the other, with some of the other cast and you know and further stuff with with Tiger himself um, and a commentary as well. So yeah, it's quite quite a lot of stuff on there. I almost feel bad for not liking it because I think because <laughs> no because I think he's genuinely a 
someone who has a who has a love of cinema as, as yeah, I, you know as yeah. I do I love lots of different types of cinema and mm. and I think the way he talks about I think he's very sincere about yeah. his filmmaking and, and I think and he, he doesn't but he doesn't take himself too seriously he doesn't take himself he's too not, seriously not no, and, he, and he likes a lot of filmmakers that I like so but that doesn't mean to say I'm going to like it does it <laughs> humor is so hard I mean we've done you know we did a month of humor some just slightly different films it's one of the hardest things to really do and do well. And, and mm. people are going to love it or they're going to not like it. And if, they don't, if it doesn't make you laugh, I think that's the interesting thing. With, with a horror film, if it doesn't necessarily make you jump out of your seat, it doesn't mean you're not going to enjoy the film because it might just no. be hard to scare you. But comedy, if you don't find it funny, it's just not working for you. And it's such a fine line with comedy, I think. And it's, it's so hard to get it right. And it's... You know, there's a lot of things that people people love it or they hate it. It's like Marmite, isn't it? Comedy, I think. It's, it's a tricky I mean, one. I guess you know, in a similar way, where you know, if you've seen enough horror films, then it is difficult for a horror, you know, a new horror film to scare you. And in the same way, if you've seen a lot of comedies, then while the joke might be different, the setup and that, it, it may, you know, you may have seen enough times, think, oh yeah, you know, I know where this joke's going or whatever. <laughs> so it kind of works in the same way. But yeah, comedy. But then, you know, because there are so many different kinds of comedy, not every every type is going to work for you, is it? You know, some people like Roy Chubby Brown. Um, you know, what are you, you going to do? <laughs> so, um, you know, other people don't. So that was Eagle vs. Shark. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button over there and don't forget to push the bell for notifications. There's other videos to check out over here. Come and find us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and join us again next week for another video.